Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm so excited to show you how you, as a total beginner, can absolutely create this really fun spacecape at home. We're gonna use a really fun new material that's super safe and super awesome, and I'm gonna show you all the techniques you need to create this fantastic planetary spacecape. So get your can of spray paint from Liquitex, get your brushes and your other acrylic paints that you already have. Come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're gonna space it up. So let me tell you what you need to do this really easy project. We're gonna go through it step by step. If you want more drill down information, check the info card in the link below for the video I did previously, this one, where I talked a lot about these really cool and much safer art products. So I've got my 11 by 14 canvas board. These come in packs, they're pre-gessoed. To do this, you don't need to do another thing to it. I'm wearing gloves because spray paint is a little bit messy. It cleans up really easily with alcohol, but these just really help me in the cleanup. And I've also got this little mask. Even though these are a much safer based water technology product of just acrylic paint, it's still a good idea to keep paint out of your lungs and out of your digestive system. So like we're always saying, don't eat paint. Now we're gonna add don't breathe paint, even if it's pretty safe. Just don't do it. Over here, I have a stencil. That is in the description below. If you check the description below, you can go right to that link. That is free on our website, and you can cut that out yourself. That's going to help us make clouds. I have a bit of saran wrap, but you can just save the packaging from your uh, canvases to do this. I have this lid from a peanut a jar, like a tub of peanuts, and I made a little tape handle. I have acrylic brushes. I've got a number 10 bright, a number 6 and a nice monogram liner. That's just a detail brush. These are for acrylic painting. A toothbrush. I have soft bodied white paint. You could also use white craft paint. And I really, as you guys know, really like my black colored gesso, but again, you could use black craft paint and be okay. I have put aside a jar of soapy water for my caps when I'm done with them because the only issue with these really cool spray paints is that the caps can clog, but with a little bit of proper maintenance and a few tips, you won't have any trouble with them at all. For a complete list of colors and everything, check the description below. Let's get started. This is gonna be really fun. So the first thing, shake all your cans a lot. So now I've got my creative box checked and my fitness box checked. So that's a nice healthy side benefit of working with these. So I'm going to take my Liquitex spray paint and I'm going to come over to my uh, canvas. I'm going to put my mask up because again, I don't want a bunch of paint in my lungs. There's not a lot of harmful stuff in here, but still, I don't like to breathe paint. And I'm going to very lightly, about six inches back from the canvas, go back and forth with my yellow. See that right there? Now, I'm interestingly going to take my red, which is a cad red medium hue, and I'm very lightly gonna spray, see that? Right over the top of that. And then, and this is the fun part, I'm gonna take my scrunched up plastic, and I'm going to dab very lightly creating this fun texture. Not a fun texture? Now you can come right here, layer back up with the yellow. Now you're seeing why I like my gloves here for this. And dab again. And then maybe a little more red here at the back half. Dabbing. You can even if you like get some of your titanium white, you know, and do some little cloud area. So once you have a pattern that feels exciting to you, I'm going to do one more spray of the red, just because I like to be, I enjoy this part, and I like to get a little fun and fussy with it. Here's the fun part. I'm going to take my little plastic lid here, to my peanuts <laughs> with my tape handle. I'm gonna press it in and hold it down. It is pretty much centered here from the top, so three fingers from here 
and four fingers from here and about two fingers over is the placement on the canvas. You can take it down if you want to, but this is a pretty good placement, I think, for our landscape that'll be here and our spacescape. Now I'm going to take my cobalt blue and I'm going to spray around the right side of this and a little bit around the left side, coming all around, adding that. I'd like to put a little cobalt hue kind of over here and I'm gonna come up with some of my quinacridone. There we go. You can see I'm just about six inches back. This is just the nozzle that comes on these paint sprayers. I like the little splatter bits. I'm making it feel sort of spacey. If you press lightly, look, you get this kind of cool little splatter and I like that effect. If you don't want it, you just use an even spray. So it's really up to you. Sometimes what people consider to be a problem in a product is actually for an artist a beneficial event. So when I have what I feel is a nice nebula, I'm going to get my black because this is space. This is what this is. And I'm going to come around the edges here. You can always test on your overspray pad. And I'm gonna come around these little edges and make sure that the darkness of space is somewhat represented here, just a bit. But I still want it to feel like there's a little nebula happening. I'm gonna come here because it'll make easier work for me later around the bottom edge. Now. Here's the fun part. Are you ready? Lift. <gasps> you have a planet! And it looks really planety. Put that aside. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shade the left hand side of your planet. I'm going to test my off spray and just very lightly, far back with soft pressure on the nozzle just shade a little bit. So see how if I apply soft pressure, it allows a lot of the planet to still show through. So it's like I shaded it. Now, one of the interesting things is that I can take the white spray paint right into my toothbrush and just flick four stars. <laughs> oh goodness. This is so easy. Need more stars? Spray on in. Your sky can be as starry as you like. Now, it's a good idea <laughs> to let this dry. Now, you know I love drying with the hair dryer to speed this up. But what I found is that if the spray paint is very thick, and you accelerate its drying, it can do a thing called crazing, which is cracking. Now, sometimes we might want to intentionally create some crazing, but this isn't one of those times. So it's best to just let this piece rest and cure a little bit for about 10 minutes. So let's give it 10 minutes and we'll meet back here for the next part of this really cool painting. So now that we've let that dry and it's ready to go the next thing, it's time to get out your handy neighborhood stencil, see? so. I've just cut out the little shape that I've drawn. You can get yours on the website. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my white paint and I'm gonna line up the first part of my stencil. And I want a high little sprig of clouds to come up on the planet. How the stencils work is the closer that you hold them to the paper, the sharper the detail is. But these are clouds, so I don't want them to be that sharp. I'm gonna hold this about a half inch away from the planet. I want it to have a shape, but a slightly diffused shape. My can is about six to eight inches away, shaking it up, and I'm making a little cloud. See that right there? There it is. It's soft, it's a little diffused, it has shading, but you can see the distinctive shape. 
Now up here, I want an even softer shape. So these are distant clouds. So I'm gonna hold this far, far, far away. And I may even, to make sure that I'm not cloning shapes, flip it over. So this, I've got my full fingers through here. This is about an inch and a half away. There you go. See how that's, that's definitely softer? Now I'm gonna be putting landscape and stuff there. And so I need to make sure that that's a little bit more cloud shape. So I'm going to come in, there we go, clouded it up. If you get a hard edge from your paper, from your stencil, you can just come in with another part of your stencil and soften it out. I need a dark color here for the balloon. And I have that left. Now I can take my mask off because the rest of this I am just doing with acrylic paint, which is again why these are so awesome. I'm gonna put out my black gesso. You can use just black paint. And I'm gonna put out this nice soft body white. You can use any white that you have. Forgot to open the, the thing. Always good to open your paint to get to it. I don't actually even need to have gloves on anymore. So I'm gonna take those off. And I'm gonna start with my number six bright. This is a number six black pearl bright. This has a synthetic filament that is ideal for acrylic painting. And I'm going to load just the edge of my brush here like this. I'm gonna come up to right about the halfway point and I'm gonna make a otherworldly sort of ridge. And how I do that is I'm gonna come, oh, three inches, four inches out this way. And then on the edge of my brush, make a jagged little run back in. And then we're gonna say we have this sort of crazy rock formation coming here. It comes out like this. Everything about spacescapes is about scale and lighting. So what we wanna do is we wanna make this great, wonderful scale in this really bizarre kind of off-worldly landscape. I might even want my ridge to go just a little further out this way. I'm gonna come around this side and do some similar stuff. I'm gonna jut up a strange ridge that spires up this way. These are almost crystalline, aren't they? And that's what you want. You want them to feel sort of crystalline. So I come up, maybe drag that out a little bit. Have fun with it, enjoy yourself. Coming along here. Now I know I'm gonna have over my figure coming here about the edge of the planet an interesting arc spire. And that is a big part of what's gonna make this feel like this is not necessarily Earth. All right, I'm gonna drag that down to the valley where our sweet figure is definitely, definitely sitting. I'm gonna to try to make sure that these aren't lined up. I want them to be a little staggered. Another little spire, another little spire. Now, wipe that off. I'm going to take my bigger number 10 bright. This is also black pearl. I'm gonna load it up. With acrylic brushes, what you're looking for is synthetic filaments over, over hairs or bristles because these won't over soften and they work really well and hold up against all the products. So I'm just painting this all black in at first. Just painting it all black in at first. Just lightly. I'm not even worried about the little gray underneath there because all these different values help make our alien landscape feel more alien. Just trying to Say so this is not like home. There's a couple really cool tricks that you as a beginner can totally do. See how it goes wandering up and then it's into its weird little spire. 
of course, as always, it is okay. Use like a traceable or something. There we go. Crystalline strange landscape. We pushed out a couple little extra spires. As we go here, we're doing really well. Rinse out your brush. So I'm gonna take my little toothbrush and I'm gonna use this in my soft body paint. I can load up either my spray paint again or this. I just wanna show you how these products work with the products you already own. And I'm going to just splatter a little bit of speckling very lightly. See how I'm just barely pressing into this landscape just to make it feel mellow, right? Of, of this alien space. And it's okay if a little splatter goes up into your clouds or goes a couple places, you won't worry about it. I'm gonna use my soapy water to rinse off my finger here, all back to normal. Toothbrush back in my water. Let's take our number 10 bright, loading it with a little bit of white paint and let's make some highlights. So we ha obviously have a light source here. We're gonna be putting a star in the um, background. So I'm going to add a little white highlight, which is going to go wet into wet, so it's going to be a little bit gray. Come along the top here. Just another little highlight right there, right? Because that's where the light is. And it's okay to brush a little bit this way. And I'm going to come along here, just adding that. And then maybe make another little highlight in this alien scape. Here in the base, I definitely, definitely am going to want to create this gray kind of valley. See yeah. that? And it can pull up into this side here. Wipe off on my towel, reload with some white paint. Let's come here. Now I'm gonna switch to the inside of this spire with my highlight. And then maybe the top of this one, they're saying there's some light shining through. Let's pull a little valley of highlight, maybe down there. And on the top of this as well. And something can be happening along this little hill here. So what I like to do is I like to kind of come up. I'm very light on my brush pressure. I'm just on the corner of my brush. I'm dusting down here and dragging through all we're doing. A lot of times what seems like some pretty serious stuff in art is just me knowing how to keep my pressure light. I'm dusting a little highlight inside here. I don't want it to be too light because I've got to create a highlight and a very long dark shadow. That's going to be another thing that contributes to this feeling like a spacecape. Like you do. So once I've made this all rigidy, and all, interest, all interesting, I can spray my little star background. Put my little mask up again. Again, this stuff is really safe, but I just don't want to breathe paint. I'm going to be back from the canvas a little bit, but a little bit closer this time because I want to focus spot. I'm going to put a star right here. And it's going to be just a short burst there it is. That's where it's going to go. That's going to be my focus star, and this is the halo. I'm going to let that dry for a while. This kind of blended effect can be really hard to get sometimes with acrylic paint and really frustrating, so it's nice that we can do that so easily with just the spray paint. I'm now going to take my detail brush. This is a liner brush. This is actually a ruby satin monogram liner, and it's a number one but you're just looking for a good, sharp, synthetic brush that'll work well with your paint. Because we're doing soft bodied, there's a lot of brushes that will work with this pretty well. I'm lining a highlight to the top of my spires to make them 
Seem like they're picking up some extra light here. Now I'm going to add the figure. And the reason I like to add a figure to some of my stuff is that I feel like it creates a sense of whimsy in place. But if you're not into doing that, don't worry about it. You don't have to. But I will show you how I do it. All right, I'm adding the highlight to the inside of that spire and I'm coming along here. I have a nice line because I'm resting my hand on the edge of my easel and I'm very lightly touching the canvas and I have a very sharp precision brush. I'm going to maybe make a little highlight coming down here just a bit. See how that just even makes them feel more crystalline and, and less worldly is these little highlights coming up the rock. Zig back a little bit of an extra highlight right there in the bright white coming up the top of this really interesting spire. You can totally do this. You've got this. Highlighting the inside of this making it even more interesting. Oh, that is very otherworldly, right? I'm going to rinse this off. Wipe off the extra water. Whenever I'm doing these I like to get them wet and make sure I have all the extra water off and sometimes I'll even hit a towel because too much water on your soft body paint can make it like watercolor. Now I'm going to load my brush up with black and sketch in my figure. You can if you want to, this is a chalk pencil, charcoal white general's chalk pencil, kind of sketch in your guy first and make sure you like it before you use paint. Or you can be like, I'm good, I'm just going to wait till you do the star. Both are completely okay. But I'll talk about how I do this little figure. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to draw on the gesture of the figure, which is kind of this little angled line. And it comes from about, oh, about two above my landscape. And then as I get near the landscape, I'm going to open this up and I create this sort of like little outstretched bent leg. This little line here is going to be my leg. And then there's going to be another little forward but yet planted leg right there. I'm going to put a little shirt shape out and thicken this leg. So if you think figures are seven and a half, seven to eight human heads, right? A lot of times when I'm sketching this in, I'm thinking about my head here and how that's going to be. So I'm going to have my arm coming up here. So if I have a head here, I'm thinking about how many heads this little strange silhouette is. And I like painting these little guys in. For sure, for sure. Little neck shape there. Little shoulder coming up that's holding the this really charming balloon. I popped out a little calf there. It's a little subtle shape, but it really helps it. I do like a little heel. What's going to really make this come together is that um, there's going to be this really long shadow. When you're doing spacescapes, elongate the shadows that you are casting. It really helps them find a sense of place. I'm thickening this line down here to imply a heel. Like everything, if sometimes you do a little less, it actually helps you. Here's the little shoulder coming off here. The elbow bends at the midpoint at the waist. So even if you're doing a weird little silhouette, you've got to keep those things in mind. Just keep them in mind. But that's what's happening. Fun stuff to do these little guys. This is a little bit like Bean Man. If you follow me a lot, you know I like to create this little character, Bean Man. Bean Man has adventures. And 
right, to the elbow there, right, because where would it be if you bent it down? It would be right there at the waist. And then I'm going to do a very fine line here, because if I thicken it, it will just not feel like it's a far away figure upreaching. Now, once I have this in, I'm going to create a little shadow here. It's going to end back here. That's this long shadow cast back from this figure. See that? That long shadow coming off the, just going right off the page even. It's important that the shadow be long. I'm rinsing out my paint. I'm going to get some white. I'm going to come right here in the center. Even kind of drive some white that makes this seem even more extreme. Just painting a little bit of that in. See that? that? Make it feel a little bit like a space cape. You can take a little of this up here, outlining that foot into the side here. Just saying that there's a path of light. I'm going to come to the figure and I'm going to very lightly outline this outer edge along the shoulder, inside the jacket, outside the leg, the inside leg, and a little bit the arm, which is a good time to sort of trim it up if you needed to. If you have any boo-boos, you can always go back at this stage and actually fix them once the paint is dry. So don't feel like you're stuck with anything you don't like ever in painting. I'm going to make a balloon. This balloon's going to be a little bigger than the head, which kind of is also sort of weird. But we're going to do that. It's a big balloon. Just a nice little oval. The oval should kind of taper to a point at the bottom. Yeah. Bigger than the head. Weird little balloon. Almost big enough to help this person take flight. This reminds me a lot of the little prince. That fairy tale. Now this here, very light line. As light of a pressure as you can. It would be very thin. And I like to run a little bit of a play line off the balloon. Come around here. If you need to, to help your balloon show up, you can come around the far side. And shape it a bit with a line. For contrast. All right, now we're going to do the star. Rinse everything out. You don't want any black in your brush for the star. Here's what I'll advise. Sometimes I have trouble just getting my line as straight as I would want it. So I like to put as long as everything's dry, right in the center of that nice little diffuse thing, a line. So I'm going to divide this in the center using this T-square. These are inexpensive little plastic T-squares and I love to have them around the studio because again, sometimes you need to be able to drop a really straight line. And they really, really help me do that. You can freehand that out for sure. But as you can see, it gives you a real hand. I always like to just test, run my fingers across it if I'm going over paint that is in questionable state of wet. I'm going to come about the halfway point again and use this as well. And that just gives me some nice guidance. Now I can come in and refine this as I want.
but I have that basis of feeling like that line is straight and that really helps me. I'm going to create a strengthened dot in the center and then as I strengthen that dot I'm going to make circles that are light lines that are opening out. This is the radiating light from the star. This is actually probably our light source that we're implying. What a bright star this is. Not quite a sun, but still brings a lot of light. I'm also going to bring out some diagonal lines to strengthen the twinkle of that star. And when that's all done, I'm going to take my little pen over here and jauntily sign my name. I hope you'll sign yours. I hope you found that fun. This is an introduction into this media. This is a big space out there. In the iCard, I have a playlist. I even have a link to a friend of mine who's done a video that explores some more space ideas and techniques, uh, Studio Silver Creek. So check all that out. Stay online. Go check out all those spray painting videos because this Liquitex spray paint really helps you use that with the acrylics that you already have. But it's safer and it's better and it can get you started today. I hope this was fun and you're going to space up everything. More of these are coming. Let me know what you'd like to know how to paint with spray paint in the comments below. I'm so excited to give you those videos as well and show you how all this media works together in a super friendly way. Be good to yourselves, be good to yourself, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>